In this video, we will define what is a distribution. But before we do this, I need to define what is a bump function. So let me introduce the set of real-valued continuous function on i with compact support. And that set will be denoted C00 or C0C. As a reminder, i is a non-empty open interval of R. And compact support means the support is included in a compact. And just intuitively, it means that the function is going to be zero outside of a compact set. Uh, the precise definition is given in chapter two, where we define what is the support based on the topological definition uh, that, that comes with it. Okay, so I have the set of all functions that are continuous and that have compact support. Uh, that uh, is, is not enough, in a sense. I will actually require the function to be even smoother than continuous. I will ask the bump function to be C infinity and also to be with compact support and a continuous function. So basically, the set of bump function is uh, the intersection of C0 0 and the set of all functions that can be uh, differentiated uh, as many times as I want. Uh, that is denoted C0 infinity or sometimes CC infinity or sometimes D. And uh, this is actually the, the D notation is not that widely used internationally. But what's interesting is that the, uh, the, 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 the dual space to this uh, D space is actually a notation which is used by everybody. So we'll, we'll come back to, to, to this in just a minute, but just, just, just uh, notation-wise, that will be either called uh, C0 infinity, CC infinity, or D. And these are, again, the set of all functions for, for, for which the support is bounded um, and, can be, uh, and the function can be differentiated for all degree of differentiation. So let me give you an example. If you look at this function, for instance, well, that will not be a BEM function. It has a compact support, obviously, but it is not uh, differentiable an infinite number of times. Actually, it's not even differentiable once. So it is not a BEM function. It's not in D. However, this function, uh, if you look at exponential of minus 1 over 1 minus x squared, if the absolute value of x is strictly smaller than 1 and 0 outside, then that will be a function which obviously is with compact support and also a function that is infinity. And if it's not clear for you, you can pause the video and just actually try to understand why uh, and uh, possibly go to the references if you still don't understand why that is a bump function. Now, let me define the test function space. Well, that is going to be easy. It is simply the set of bump functions, uh, basically the set D, that I just defined. Now, this is a vector space, and I would like to equip this vector space with a topology. And I'm going to do this by defining how sequences of D converge. Now, that's a little tricky because uh, it's not obvious by, that by defining the way sequences converge, I can define the topology. Obviously, if I have a topology, I can uh, easily say, well, this sequence is converging or not. And you saw the definition of convergence in your CIP class that is a prerequisite to this PDE class. So, so you know that we can go from topology to uh, convergence of sequence. Here, what I'm saying is we're going to do the, we're going to go the other way around. I'm going to define the way sequences are converging and that will give you the topology. It's not always the case. We will admit it works. And next year, if you choose the elective class distribution and operators, then you will actually uh, go deeper into that, that particular point and understand why this is true. So let me uh, give you the definition of convergence in the space D in the test function space in the space of bump functions. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to consider a sequence of functions phi n. Uh, each phi n obviously is a bump function. And a phi, which is also a bump function, also an element of the test function space. And I will say that the sequence phi n converges 
to phi in D if two things are satisfied. Number one, I want to have a compact set K for which the support of every phi n will be included in K. So, so it's important that, uh, that the support of phi n just does not get, uh, um, get, doesn't get out of control. I mean, it needs to be included in a set K which will be fixed. That's the first requirement. The second requirement is that the, the phi n converge uniformly to phi and that the derivatives also converge uniformly to the derivative of phi and that the second derivatives are converge uniformly to the second derivative of phi and so on and so forth actually for all possible derivatives. And as you know, phi n can be differentiated as many times as I want and so can phi. So you see, it is really a, a very, very strong convergence. Uh, when I'm saying strong, it means that convergence is extremely uh, demanding. Uh, you have to have uniform convergence for the functions and all the derivatives of this function. And when that is the case, and we will say that we have a, uh, a, a convergence in D. Okay, now it's time to define what is a distribution. The set of distributions will be the topological dual of the test function space. So, D was the test function space, well, the topological dual will be denoted D prime. Its elements will be called distributions or generalized functions. As you know, the topological dual is the set of all continuous and linear functions that go from that space to R. So, in this case, uh, the space of distributions is basically the set of all linear and continuous functions t that will take a test function phi and will return a real number. That is a distribution. And again, it means linear and continuous. So linearity means that if I apply t, that, uh, that, that, that continuous linear function, uh, if I apply t, to a test function phi plus lambda psi, so that's going to be a, a test function. As you know, as, I, as we just mentioned, d is a linear space, the vector space. So phi plus lambda psi is going to be also in the space, uh, the test function space. So if I apply t to this, then I want to have t of phi plus lambda t of psi. That, that's linearity. And I want to have continuity, which means that if I apply t to phi n, then the limit of this must be t applied to the limit of phi n. Okay? And in what I just said, uh, just wanted to say that this must be true for all phi and psi test functions, bump functions if you prefer, and for uh, lambda a real number scalar. Okay? So that's what, uh, that's what we, we have here, uh, the definition of a distribution. Now, we will use this notation instead of t of phi, we will use uh, most often a bracket notation t phi. So, let me rewrite what we just wrote above uh, with uh, this, uh, this bracket notation here. Uh, that is uh, linearity t applied to phi plus lambda psi is t applied to, to phi plus lambda t applied to psi. And uh, if uh, phi n converges to phi in D, then t applied to phi n converges to t applied to phi in R. So let's give a first example here. Let's, the interval i contains zero, and let's consider t, the distribution, to be delta zero, which takes a test function phi and returns phi evaluated in zero. Okay, is this a distribution? Well, the answer is it will be if it is linear and continuous. So is it linear? Let's apply delta zero to any phi and psi and, and lambda. So let's actually look at what happens when I do delta zero of uh, phi plus lambda psi. 
by definition of delta zero, that is phi of zero plus lambda psi of zero, which is delta zero phi plus lambda times uh, lambda, delta zero of psi. So it is linear. What about continuity? Well, let's uh, uh, consider a sequence of elements of D uh, converging to phi, and let's apply delta zero to phi n. Well, that by definition is phi n of zero. But what we know is that uh, phi n of zero, when I take the limit when n goes to plus infinity, that will be phi of zero. That is the uniform convergence uh, that will guarantee this. As a matter of fact, we don't even need uniform convergence. Pointwise convergence is enough, but obviously it comes from uh, uniform convergence. So we do have this convergence, which means that the limit of delta zero phi n is delta zero of phi. In other words, delta zero is both linear and continuous. It is a distribution. Here is the very same thing using the bracket notations, uh, and obviously, I mean, everything else is just notation, just a matter of notation, okay? Um, this uh, distribution, where you evaluate the, 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 the test function at one specific point, has a name, it's called the Dirac distribution, so we can actually generalize this to the evaluation at any point, uh, which would be in A, in, in, in the interval I. So the Dirac distribution in A is defined as delta A phi equals phi of A. Okay, that is the Dirac distribution. Let's look at a second example. Okay, I'm going to consider a compact set K, including I, and I will define T as the application that goes from DI to R, that associates to phi the integral over that compact set K of phi of x dx. Okay, is this a distribution? Well, first, is it linear? Well, pretty obviously it is. It comes from the linearity of the integral, so that's not a problem. Obviously, we have linearity. What about continuity? Well, let's phi n be a sequence in D, converging to phi. Now, I want to look at what happens when I apply t to phi n minus phi. What happens is that I have the integral of a k of phi n minus phi. And obviously, phi n minus phi can always be bounded on k by the uh, norm, uh, the infinity norm of phi n minus phi. Just, just, just the supremum of it uh, will basically do it. And of course, because if, if you have the Lebesgue, the Lebesgue integral, what you can just do is the essential supremum, just the, just the, the, the L infinity norm is just, is just fine. So what I'm saying is I take this, 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 this supremum and uh, I multiply it by the measure of k. Since it's a compact set, that's finite. And what we will have is that the limit when n goes to plus infinity, will go to zero because phi n minus phi goes to zero. Remember, phi n converges in D, therefore it converges uniformly. Therefore, I have this limit. So, T is a distribution. Let me do a little variation on this second example. And instead of considering the integral of uh, phi over k, I'm going to consider a f, which is going to be a function in n1 log. That means that it is locally integrable. And I will uh, define tf, the what, what is going to be a distribution, which is the application that goes from di to r, and to phi, it associates the integral over i of uh, f of x phi x. Is this linear? Well, once again, yes, because it's a because it's an integral. A linearity of the of the of the integral just gives me the linearity of that function of that application tf. Is it uh, continuous? Well, let's uh, let's see. Uh, let's take a sequence of elements in di converging to phi, and if I apply tf to phi n minus phi, basically do the, kind of the same trick as I just did on the second example, and so I'm going to pull out this uh, phi n minus phi in norm infinity multiplied by the integral of f of x over i, which uh, is going to be perfectly defined because f is in L1 log. Okay, 
Now, phi n minus phi, as we know, it's, it's norm in L infinity, will go to zero because we have convergence of phi n toward phi in D, which implies the uniform convergence. Subsequently, the convergence of the difference of phi n minus phi in norm L infinity to zero. Therefore, we do have limit of Tf applied to phi n, which is Tf applied to, 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 to phi. Tf is a distribution. This is what we're going to use in the next video to include n1 lock in the space of distributions.